Hi, my name is Gigi Morales and today I'm going to be answering some questions. So I hope that I know all of the answers. And here we go. The first question says, where did you grow up? I grew up in the country of Mexico and I was born in a town, in a city called Jalapa. Jalapa is where I'm at right now. And uh, Jalapa is very beautiful. It's very humid, which means it's raining constantly. It rained today too. And because it's always very humid, it's also very lush and very green. So the next question is, do you have any pets? I have two pets and you can see one right there and the other one right there. This one is Luna. Hi, Luna. Luna. Hola, Luna. You see, that is Luna. And that one is Mojo. Hey, Mojo, say hi. Can you say hi, Mojo? Mojo is very lazy. He's getting ready to go to sleep, although he sleeps most of the time. But he's also a lot of fun and he's very, very loving. And Mojo um, is getting ready to sleep right there on my couch right now. And let's see, the next question is, what did you want to be when you were little? When I was little, I wanted to be a trapeze artist because I wanted to fly in the air and jump from one place to the other and hold hands with another trapeze artist and do all kinds of acrobats and be really brave and very skillful. Um, the other thing I wanted to be when I was little is I wanted to be a mind reader. I wanted to be able that only with the power of my mind to find out things, like to find out what other people was thinking. I wanted to be so powerful that I could actually fix things that were broken only with my mind. And I also wanted to be able to move things, to move them without touching them, to do it with my mind. Um, I can't do it. I can never I have never been able to do it, but um, that's what I wanted to be when I was little. And the next question is, what are your top five favorite books? And I'm going to tell you right now the name of my most favorite book because it's the book that changed my life. This is a book that I read when I was in middle school. I was about 12 years old. And um, it has a very, very long title. And I'm going to tell it to you right now, the title in Spanish. Are you ready? The name in Spanish of this book is called La increíble y triste historia de la cándida heréndira y su abuela desalmada. The name in English is much shorter. It's only called Heréndira. And it's written by an incredible writer whose name is Gabriel García Márquez. That is my favorite book ever. And it is my favorite book because it was a book that once I read it, I knew I was a reader and I wanted to read more and more and more. And after that, then I have read many other books that I really, really like. Like, for example, I'm going to tell you my favorite picture book ever. And this is written by The Incredible and also illustrated by Peter Sis. And the title of this book is A Small Tall Tale from the Far, Far North. This is an adventure story. This is a story about someone who travels to the far north to find many incredible things. And the journey is incredible, but also the artwork, because Peter Seed, Peter Seed is a magnificent artist. He's also a great storyteller. And he can tell story within story and just captivate the reader the way he did it with me through his illustrations and his writing. If you go to the public library, make sure to look for this book and ask for it, because it's wonderful. Another book that I love is Calling the Doves or El Canto de las Palomas because it's a bilingual book, escrito, written by Juan Felipe Herrera and illustrated, illustrado por Eli Simons. And this is a story of a boy who is the son of immigrants who travel looking for work through the, uh, the farms and they are farm workers. And he tells about his family and sleeping under the starry night and about his mother and the music that they hear and the life that they had together. This is another great book. Now there is also 
Wow, I love this book, The Stray Dog by Mark Simmons. And this is a story of a family who goes uh, out for a picnic. And while they are there at the park, they find a stray dog. And they spend the afternoon playing with the dog. And then when day is over, they had to go back home. Ah, let's take Willie home, say the children. No, say the father. He must belong to somebody explained the mother, and they will miss him. And then they realize that as they go home, they really, really miss the dog all week. And what if the dog doesn't belong to anybody? So they decide to go back and look for the dog. And this is another great story. I hope that you can uh, look for it and see how it ends. And then this is a book that I always like because it's funny. This is Daily Bee by John Blake, illustrated by Alex Scheffler. And this is about an animal. Let's see if you know what animal is this right here. Who doesn't know what he is? And he goes around and the story says, Daily Bee didn't know what he was. Am I a monkey? He said. Am I a koala? Am I a porcupine? And because Daily Bee doesn't know what he is, he goes around trying to find out with really, really funny results. So this is another book that I love. And now we are going to have to put the books here because there are so many that I like. But I, I need to tell you uh, the answer for the next question. And it says, how do you become a writer? Well, when I was a child, I wrote papers for my school and my homework and later when I was um, a teenager I wrote letters for my boyfriends but I never wrote stories. I didn't write stories until I was an adult and I came to the United States and then I saw picture books just like these ones and I knew that I wanted to tell stories because I had many many stories I wanted to tell. I had a baby, I had a, a young son, and I wanted to be able to tell the stories that I was told when I was a kid, the stories that my mother told me, that my family or my friends told me, stories I heard when I was little. Um, but I wanted to tell them in the great way that I saw was done in picture books. Um, so I decided I was going to write. I was going to learn how to do it. I didn't know how to write in English, so I had to learn that too. And what I did is I took a few classes, some evening classes, um, and then I also started practicing. I practiced and practiced and practiced, and I still am practicing. Uh, let's see, the next, next question is, what is your favorite way to spend a Saturday morning? Okay, Saturday morning, I wake up, I have breakfast, I see my dogs, and sometimes we do things together, and then I go to dance class. Every Saturday morning, I take an African dance class just a few blocks away from my, from my house, and they have light drumming, so it's really exciting because the music is great and loud, and, 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 and you just want to move and dance, and then I spend my morning pretty much dancing, then I come back home, and uh, if, I, if I can, uh, after I take a shower, I always go out. I try to take a bus and just go somewhere. Maybe, hopefully somewhere I haven't been before or, or a place that I like. I visit some of the nearby towns uh, and then I go and I walk in the plaza. Sometimes I sit at a bench on the park and um, I sometimes I buy me an ice cream cone and if I can, I tell my friends I'm going to be there and hopefully they come and they join me. And that's pretty much what I like to do on a Saturday morning. Let's see. The next question is, do you have any advice for our readers or their parents? And I will say, you are a reader or you are the parent of a reader. So always have books with you because you never know when you might need a book. You might need it um, when you are in the bus and you can read if it is a long ride or if you are waiting in line for something you can always take your book out and read or you might need um, even a place just to 
you know, visit and sit, uh, and no, I don't know, um, sit in the bench of the park and find out that you will have, would love to have some company. And the book, books are the most magnificent company you can uh, have. So if you have a book, you are never alone. Have a book with you in your desk, near your uh, couch, maybe even uh, near your bed, in the kitchen, in the bathroom. You never know when you might need a book. Find a book that you like and have it always with you. Let's see, and the next question question is how do you define success when I think of success I think of creating the opportunity first to dream and then to go for that dream to make it true but also to be grateful for what I already have when I start uh, thinking about all the things that I already have and I'm grateful for that I love like my dogs like my studio like the time I create for uh, telling stories and writing them and, and, and um, making drawings and all those things that I adore, I feel like I'm successful because I'm taking things that I always wanted to do and things that I dreamed of doing and I make them happen. I make them happen uh, just like that. If I want to be an artist, I become an artist and I sit on my table and I start drawing. Now nobody tell, has to tell me whether I am not an artist or, or yes, I am an artist. Because it's mostly a decision. And if I decide to be successful, I just go out and be successful by uh, appreciating everything that I have and the things that I'm capable of doing and those that even if I don't know how to do it, that I can just begin to learn how to do. That's, that's what success is for me, is dreaming and, and creating and going for those things that I love. Uh, and the next question is, if you could go back and talk to your eight years old self, what advice would you give her? And I will tell her, don't stop drawing because I know that you love drawing. So just keep doing it. And I will tell her, I know that you love stories. So go ahead and ask for more stories. Ask people to tell you more stories. So Yuji, if you are there, you are eight years old, um, don't be afraid. I know that sometimes it's easy to be afraid of not being able to know how to do some things. And if you are afraid, it's okay. Just keep doing it. Keep doing what you love and keep drawing and keep uh, writing and keep singing and keep dancing and just keep being you because um, when you grow up, you're gonna be very, very happy. And let's see, the last question is, what are you currently working on? Well, right now I'm working in illustrations for a book um, written by uh, the magnificent <laughs> Sherman Alexi. And I love Sherman Alexi's work. Uh, he's a, a great writer. Uh, my family and I, my son, my husband and I, had been for years not only reading his books, but also sharing them w with anyone who lets us. Um, we have many times given uh, Chairman Alexis books to family as gifts um, for Christmas because we, we always liked it so much, we wanted other people to be able to read his stories. And now I'm really, really fortunate that I'm going to be illustrating uh, Sherman Alexis' first picture book and um, you cannot see everything I'm doing right now because uh, right now they are just very little drawings. I have some here and you can have a little peek. And I'm going to give it to you just quickly because this is just work in progress and in a couple of, uh, no, more like in a year or something like that, you will be seeing the result. And that is all I have for today because I think that's the end of the questions. But um, thank you so much for visiting. Thank you for visiting here my studio. Um, Mojo and Luna are ready to sleep right now. And probably I will be too. And I will go to bed um, happy that we um, were able to have a conversation tonight. So read lots and take care. Bye.